Nothing missed. Hunker down, you guys. Mighty Mouse comes up big. Lightning coming out of his heel. See ya. He just wiped him off the face of the earth. On Sunday, many fans choose to see a game through the words of their local radio broadcasters, men whose objectivity sometimes gives way to their passion for the home team. This is unbelievable. They whine. He's bad. He's bad. He's spiking the ball. Get him in the Pro Bowl. Big spike. They exaggerate. George Grand has just been elected king of the world. And then some. God is on the Steelers' side. Go Troy! But most of all, they root for the home team. Sometimes to the point of delirium. 10, 12, 15, 17, 10, 6, 5, touchdown. For these guys, it's strictly personal. Call it a touchdown, you goose. Now they say touchdown, and he just ruined a great call. Although each has his own style, one voice from Pittsburgh stands out as unique. Meet Myron Cope. Hardball, you can't possibly make nothing out of this. You can't make nothing. I'm going to make you into buttermilk. Let's face it, my voice is uh, not what you think of as a broadcasting voice. It tends to cut through concrete. That was a shovel pass, Pierre, to me, you know. It the old coal, uh, to throw the coal into the bin there, business. I always try to, to inject humor uh, because it is, after all, a game. That's all it is. It's not life or death. Tony Siri Guza, I am going to describe him as looking like the guy they send to Ron to break your legs when you haven't paid your bookie. <laughs> so, they, and he does, that's what he looks like. I'm a stickler for pronouncing a name right. Would you have expected Rocky Blyer to turn into Nijinsky? It was Nijinsky. Well, then Nijinsky was a great ballet dancer. And I have a little fun with those two, you understand, if they lend themselves to it. I exaggerate lots of times, you know. And they shed that guy like he was a tetsy fly. Well, he had jumped so high, he was at the top, the top deck of the stadium. That that play, uh, if, if you'd have clocked it, you would have figured that it, would, it was a, 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 a milk wagon horse running a mile or something. It took so long. Tiger hit him. His teeth are in the third row. But we know his teeth aren't in the third row, so I'll exaggerate when the exaggeration is obvious to the listener. You know, when Kirkland puts a big hit on somebody, I'm feeling like exaggerating. I'm feeling good. And I think the listener gets to feel the blow. Oh, but he knocked that guy flat as a mackerel. I heard a, a very prominent network analyst on television just recently and uh, the kid from New England, the Curtis Martin, he'd run in about three yards for a touchdown. And it was a good, tough three yards. It was a hard run. And this fella described it this way. He said, Curtis did an excellent job. And what the hell kind of description is that of a good, tough three yard touchdown run? He did an excellent job. It's like you're listening to a biology teacher. Well, nice paper. You did an excellent job. See what I mean? Football's a passionate game. Let's go! Let's go! Why not exaggerate when you're making it obvious that you are? All of a sudden, they get lit up like somebody built a bonfire under their posteriors, and here they come down the field. Cope may root for the home team, but he's not afraid to tell it like it is. When the football team stinks, I'm saying it stinks. The Steelers have been El Stinko on third down. When they're playing well, I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it because I want to root for them anyhow. This Steeler defense is, is brutal. Don't. All out the National Guard. Here we go, Steelers! Here we go. In 1975, Cope's passion for the Steelers led him to invent the team's most visible symbol, the terrible towel. And the towel is out. Feel the power, Byron. But in its debut, one Steeler veteran was not impressed. Randy Russell, when I was given the towel to build up for that first game, he comes up to me in the locker room. He says, Cope, what's this crap about a terrible towel? You know what he did in that game? He, cut, he picked up a fumble at the South Steelers' seven-yard line. And a listener of mine sends me a little poem, which went like this. He ran 93 like a bat out of hell. And no one could see how he rambled so well. 
"'Twas easy," said Andy, and he flashed a crooked smile. I was snapped on the fanny by the terrible towel. From past to present, the terrible towel has become a part of Pittsburgh, as have Cope's music videos. Well, get out your towel, your terrible, terrible towel. The Steelers gonna play a playoff game. Stop, MC Cope, I'm a sister sledge. Go fall off a ledge, you got to post here. Jerome Bettis, Jerome Bettis, he is sure he's the real thing, he ain't no head of lettuce, he is one tough cuss all aboard a big bus. Boy, Jerome Bettis! You people don't know what it's like to win a Super Bowl! Coke may also be the most imitated man in the Steel City. Hey, hum ha! Go around time there, young ma! Or yoy, or double yoy. It just comes natural to me, all that stuff. I don't fake it. I, I'm just an immersed in the football game. And that guy, that guy landed on his chin, say, where'd he go? Where'd the bus go? He put another guy in the third row. Yoy and double yoy. The Steelers look like they may come back from the jaws of defeat to the thrill of victory. I can't imagine uh, doing another team's games when I don't have any interest in my heart in rooting for them uh, to win. It, what, what fun would it be? And this is one of the most unbelievable football games we have ever witnessed. My hair was standing on end. Why wasn't NFL Films there for that? <laughs>